subscribe to our youtube channel for in-depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hirul Bhatia. We have with us uh, Devendra Kumar Pant, Chief Economist at India Ratings and Research, joining in. Welcome to the show, Mr. Pant, and always a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, Mr. Pant, my first question coming to you is, we are already in the second wave with regards to where COVID is concerned, and it seems from the healthcare perspective, it's worse than what we saw in the first wave. Now, with that, from the third quarter onwards, we've seen a good economic recovery that's come in. growth has been there do you think this is something which is going to be sustainable taking the current and present situation into consideration uh yeah so what uh, you are right uh, the situation has gradually start improving uh, so uh, we will term it as uh, a recovery phase rather than rather than a, a, a growth phase and uh, the thing started improving uh, immediately after the lockdown was lifted so we had seen from june uh, onward there was spurt in economic activity whether we look at uh, global mobility indicators and other but what happened is after uh, june and july the, the 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 speed or the acceleration which we had seen in june and july because april and may were were really bad uh, that acceleration had uh the accelerate the the activities as measured by google mobility index workplace mobility that is now almost flattish kind of thing which is being being shown very very minor minor improvement uh now if one takes into account like um, second wave we have some sort of uh, regional lockdowns or local lockdowns or the curfew or the restriction because they are not as as 100% lockdown as the severity is not at what we had seen last year in 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 uh, april and may mm. but uh, the activities are growing at a very slow pace so if one looks at uh, uh, gsdp state gsdp mobility from the each individual state mobility index uh, mm. what we are saying towards end of march they have plateaued out so almost flattish kind of thing in in last uh, last few months uh now what it is going to do and kind of impact it is going to have on the economic recovery in fy22 is will depend on two things a uh how much area or how what proportion of the area or the population in the economy is subject to your localized or regional lockdowns hmm. and b on top of that how severe those lockdowns are hmm. are we going back to the situation of april and may 2020 which according to oxford university india had the severest lockdown in the world the other places have a lockdown had lockdown but now even if you look at the situation at ground you are in mumbai you can visualize it more than than for me sitting in in delhi uh, because in delhi what we had seen in in since uh, beginning of the june things were back to normal so people were moving around uh, people have given the thrown caution to the wind you will find people still um, with moving without mask uh, social distancing was uh, something which was only on the on the paper uh now again from when the, the the virus or the second wave started we had seen i have observed on uh, on road the people have started again using masks uh now what it is going to do like in the first uh, lockdown we had total close down of the hotel and restaurant this time at least the take away is allowed uh what we had seen the when the lockdown came last year uh everyone was taken taken by surprise and nobody was prepared for it and as we as we moved from april to 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 may we had seen even the e-tailers um, the, the the they have worked out and some sort of uh, supply chain uh, were, were improving uh we believe uh, in um, one year living through the mm-hmm. pandemic uh everybody has uh, found a way to live with it 
everybody has found a way how to uh, work as per these restrictions. Mm. Uh, so there are, although there is no no hard data which is available, which tells you how the the all those retailers or the supply chain have been strengthened or not. Mm. But we believe there has been uh, uh, retailers or uh, retailers are better equipped to take care of situation at this this these regional or localized lockdown. Now, if they don't continue for a longer period, then we can say we will be we will will come out with the minimal minimal destruction or minimal uh, destruction uh, destruction to the economic growth, mm. uh, which. Uh, all of us are all all the forecasters are in, in double digit, right? We are among among one of the at the lower end. We we still have our forecast for FY22 is 10.4 percent. So the uh, range varies from somewhere around double digit or 10 or percent to somewhere around 12 and a half or 13 or 14 percent. Uh, most of it is mainly because of base effect. Uh, whether the productivity gains are there in the economy, unlikely to say yes, or whether uh, economy had shown any major structural changes. Yes, there are a couple of things which are uh, there. So we had seen the PLI scheme for a few, few, few sectors, but those PLI impact on the on the output and so and in turn on growth will take a time before they will be they will be felt. Right. So, Mr. Pant, according to you from here on, what's your outlook with regards to growth as well as in terms of inflation as well? Because clearly, if you go to see with regards to where growth is concerned, uh, we've got seen a good positive rebound in the third quarter. Now, everyone's anticipating that at least FY22 will be double digit growth. And with this, again, inflation becomes a major, uh, you know, uh, aspect that we need to watch out for as well. What are your estimates suggesting? Uh, yeah, inflation may turn out to be a concern, uh, but uh, not so much it is. Uh, so what we are uh, looking at inflation during the year, um, averaging out somewhere around around four and a half, between four and a half and five percent. A lot of it was uh, mainly because of the commodity prices have run up um, since uh, December of last year. Uh, and the major reason for that was um, the moment the vaccination news started at the global level. Uh, so globally, we had seen uh, US, UK, Europe are doing a lot of uh, vaccination. Uh, India has also started. Uh, so there was a spurt in, in commodity prices, whether you talk about um, oil, whether you talk about base metal, whether you talk about any other. And that has that that has impact on on uh, the inflation domestically. Mm, most of uh, what we are looking at uh, extra loose monetary policy, or whether we say extra loose, or we say the um, accommodative stance, uh, liquidity stance by the by the RBI, that all is 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 plain. Now there is some sort of demand destruction which has taken place in FY22. Some of this uh, are permanent is, is permanent destruction because uh, all those people, those who have lost jobs, and if you look around, uh, whether your workplace, whether your uh, neighborhood, uh, you will find some incidents like people have lost jobs. Now, all those who have migrated from rural, urban areas to the, to the rural areas, whether all have come back, I don't think that all of them have come back. So there is some destruction to the demand. Uh, the government, with its uh, uh, hard budget constraint, like high fiscal, did whatever in the Manrega. And if I simply look, Manrega wages of 202 rupees per day with the minimum uh, unskilled labor wage hmm. nationally is 360 rupees. So 158 rupees per, per person day hmm. is the demand destruction. So some of it will come back because people like you and me and most of the people who are in this call uh, their jobs are secure. Uh, they have not seen, uh, may not have seen a big uh, salary cuts. 
so they will continue to continue to spend but as a rational consumer with a life income hypothesis but up to a certain point i will consume but after a point i will also apply break to my consumption and that's what exactly has happened in past two years when the growth slowed down we thought initially like okay this is temporary phase we continue to 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 uh, spend we continue to spend either by dipping down on our savings or by leveraging our consumption but when it came down realized like the growth is faltering and so is my your income and my income so the consumption so but some of this consumption is coming back so as i said uh, unless unless there is national scale severe lockdown like last time there is unlikely that there will be the major change to the to the growth forecast but yes maybe maybe those people those uh, some of the estimates which were uh, very uh, optimistic and running somewhere around 15 odd percent maybe there will be some correction but on the back of minus 8 percent even a minor change in the sentiments which has actually taken place in the month of uh, uh, january and february this year once the uh, once the vaccination you started all across the globe uh, so there will be some but uh, inflation uh, likely to be somewhere around 4 and a half to between 4 and a half and to 5% and somewhere in in the uh, uh, to uh, between rbi mandated 4% and upper target of 6% it is likely to hover around that uh, uh, that band uh, between 4 to 6% for most of this fiscal year right and with this if you see india's debt to gdp ratio mr pand it's increased from having a 74% to almost a 90% during the pandemic now going ahead what levels do you think it could actually stabilize at taking the economic recovery into consideration uh, look here um, uh, what we should be looking at yeah uh we should have a stable debt to gdp ratio mm -hmm. and uh, but rather than looking at debt to gdp uh, because uh, whatever debt has to be repaid uh, can't be paid from gdp it has to be right. paid from the revenues so what is worse for india's case because india's uh, revenue to gdp ratios are, are mm -hmm. low so if i look at general government level central state put together uh, we are somewhere in 300% rate debt to gdp Now, if I go to classical debt, debt sustainability uh, issue, uh, so as long as our our nominal GDP growth yeah. remains in excess of uh, interest rate on the debt, so the and this is interest rate not on the flow, it is on the stock. So whatever amount of debt we have, so it is of somewhere between between seven and seven and a half percent is is the average interest rate on debt. Now. 21 FY 21 was abnormal year. Whether one you one whether one uses the term uh, black swan event or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a rare event. It is unlikely to happen every every second year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, norm normally, if you look at past few years, our nominal GDP growth had generally remains in the double digits. It is I think in FY 20 it came down to to close to eight percent or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so a positive rate spread, the the, the nominal GDP to a minus interest rate on debt will give some support. But this is one side of the story. The second side of the story is we should have a surplus on the primary account. Mm -hmm. So here, when we say the primary account, it's fiscal deficit, net of interest payment. So had there been no debt, what would have been the fiscal deficit? Mm -hmm. Fiscal deficit, you net out interest. Now, unfortunately, we continue to have to have a, a sub deficit, primary deficit. So even after netting out interest payment from the fiscal deficit, we still have the deficit, and that is keeping the pressure on the interest uh, on the on the debt sustainability. Now, going forward from now and say next couple of years, uh, so this should be look more on a medium term rather than a, a point estimate. Because if we look at an FY21, everything go haywire, so we can't have a, a, a proper handle, or we can't have policy or theories based on that. So yes, debt sustainability is a challenge. Uh, but if the GDP growth improves from here, which if I look at the two estimates which are come from the government side, right? Uh, there is no official estimate of the growth beyond FY22. 
So if one looks at um, your uh, economic survey by the chief economic advisor, uh, the real GDP growth assumed is uh, for 23 and 24 is six and a half and seven percent. Uh, if one looks at uh, the nominal GDP growth in 15th Finance Commission uh, numbers, uh, that is somewhere inching from next year in FY23 going down to nine and a half, gradually moving up to 11, 11 and a half. Wow. So it says like, look, if we are talking about so fixated 8% GDP growth number, we are unlikely to reach there. Uh, days of uh, very high double digit inflation, which was giving a high nominal GDP and in turn an, an inflation tax on you mm -hmm. and me and everyone, they, th those days are gone. So it will be a challenging time. If we are able to maintain our nominal GDP growth somewhere around, around 10, 12% and have some correction on our fiscal deficit, the debt to GDP will not be a major, major challenge, but if our growth falters and we continue to have a high primary deficit, tax sustainability will become a major challenge for the industry. Right. So with this overall, if you see the liquidity situation in the country, as well as the way the global liquidity situation is, how do you think that will impact our money market overall? Uh, look, uh, so... People have given different names to last economic policy. Some say <clears throat> this is nothing but OMO. Some say it's Indian QE, whatever one may say. Uh, so RBI has what RBI has done. RBI has committed its balance sheet to for the um, uh, buy, buying back of securities from the market. Uh, one lakh crore, which is a big amount. Because if you see in past few years, OMO was somewhere closer to 3 trillion or 3 lakh rupees. So it is saying one third of that I will do in one quarter. Mm. Uh, the stage where we are in right now, nah, though there is always a demand from the market like interest rate should be lower, uh, it's going to have a minimal impact or impact will not be very significant because if this kind of low interest rate environment prevails at a time when the investment demand is getting a boost, then there will be favorable impact to the economy. Right now, what is happening is even with uh, a high government borrowing, uh, with household savings declining, the pressure on interest rate is there to rise. Yeah, yeah. And what it is going to do is it is going to keep your interest rate in the economy suppressed. Now, after effect of that will be, we had seen what has happened in the small saving interest rate. They will also fall and you will have the low interest rate regime in the economy prevailing for some more time. Mm. Now, this, is the, this, this situation is there when we have the extraordinary situation and there is requirement for the government to borrow. Now, this situation can't continue for a longer time. You can't have this situation forever because then this will mean the economy is permanently on the ventilator. Mm -hmm. Right? And you cannot have forward the economy and individual permanently on the ventilator. You have to take out patient or the economy from ventilator to, to ICU, ICU to the general ward and from general ward to back to their home and so that economy starts functioning. Functioning, correct. So, liquidity is likely to remain like this at least in in uh, next six to eight months or next six, nine months, maybe towards end of the end of the year. Hmm. Now, there's a big if. The assumption is uh, the vaccination continues the way it is continuing because what we are doing right now somewhere around thirty five lakh per day, so that translates into the rate of ten crore per month, 10 crore per month, already we have done 10 crore, maybe April, May, June, July, by end of July, we may have somewhere around 50 crore vaccination. Mm -hmm. Now, if that happens, and as epidemiologists and doctors say is that one who is infected, there are still a chance of getting the virus uh, uh, infection because no vaccine will give you 100% uh, protection. But the severity of that is likely to be much lower than a normal non-infected, non-vaccinated non, non, non -vaccinated person. 
Mm. And that is going to, to improve economic activity. And once that happens, you have to gradually come out from the accommodative stance to normal, uh, a normal stance. And post that, if inflation and growth dynamics are such, may go for uh, may go for the uh, the monetary tightening because tightening because we can't have this kind of liquidity situation in the market or in the economy forever. Right. So, Mr. Pant, overall, what's your outlook coming in with regards to where the rupees concerned as well as bond deals? What's the range we should be looking at? Uh, so, our estimate is uh, um, we, as economists, we don't go for uh, uh, daily or weekly. So, we generally look at uh, where the year end will be, uh, fiscal year end. So, before this monetary policy and that uh, one lakh crore was not announced, we were looking at somewhere around 615 to, to uh, between uh, around 615 to 625 uh, kind of uh, 10 year GZ, uh, which we believe now will be somewhere around around six odd percent because whatever one may do the the, the the extraordinary demand by the government will always keep a pressure on the interest rate currency because uh, you can't have extra loose monetary policy and you can uh, that will leave a lot on uh, 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 on on the currency rate mm -hmm. so the currency during the year, uh, fiscal year we would we we are looking at somewhere around depreciating somewhere closer to four percent again this this is not on, on a point estimate this is average for the fiscal year so fy22 may see an uh, a depreciation of somewhere around four odd percent in the rupee value uh, a lot will depend how the, the the in the global scenario how the U.S. dollar pans out. If the dollar continue to get strengthened from uh, where it is right now, uh, we may see because uh, what is happening is uh, huge capital inflows. So last fiscal we have added more than hundred billion dollar in our forex reserve. So while while uh, looking purely not from the not from the demand and supply uh, of how much rupee, uh, dollar is coming, how much is, uh, is going out, looking purely from the from the Palasa Samuelson hypothesis and that way, uh, the productivity gains uh, differential between India and US are likely to, to improve significantly. You will uh, unlikely to see a lot of uh, uh, inflation differential moving favorably in our way. Uh, but you have significant amount of forex reserves, which are as on today, if we see, is more than a year of uh, uh, import demand. So put all this to, uh, put all these things together, somewhere around four to four and a half percent on an average, as on today, will be the depreciation on the of the rupee. Absolutely, and I think the way forward from here is going to be really crucial as well as to how things pan out. Thank you, Mr. Pan, so much for joining us on the show with your inputs. Pleasure always speaking to you and I hope you enjoyed the conversation as well. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thanks.